Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Sunday, September 17th, 2017 edition of VR News. Really stoked, fantastic mood tonight. Going to have some very cool episodes that I'm proud of releasing this week. Also want to do a Q&A episode. I try my best with the comments section to keep on top of it, but there are posts that I miss from time to time and even full days. So if you've got a question, let me know in the comments below. In the description, I'm going to include alternative ways of contacting me. There's Steam. There's, well, Steam has been pretty horrible because I haven't done a lot online on Steam for many, many weeks. Direct message, Twitter, the channel's email address, and the comment section, the best place currently for those. And we'll talk more as the week goes on when I start releasing some of those additional videos. Guys, with that said, let's jump into VR news. I want to start with the first story, Zing, The Land Beyond. Talked about this game. Well, they have pushed back their release date by three days. So it was originally going to be September 18th tomorrow. That would have been the release date. Instead, they've pushed it back to September 21st. Three days delay on that launch date. Next up, Observer. A cyberpunk game. Let's talk about this quickly. So it's probably going to be pretty obvious and a given that uh, I'm a Rutger Hauer fan. And I missed this game Observer from developer Blooper Team a few weeks ago. I know there's a couple of my viewers who have had this either on their channels or have played this. But yeah, it passed me by pretty much. Unfortunately, doing the research for the story, found out a couple of things. The good news is... It includes virtual reality support, and it looks freaking gorgeous. Cyberpunk VR, my immediate act reaction is sign me up. However, some hiccups, some issues, because the virtual reality is not official support. It's apparently it was developed, but it wasn't released with any kind of promotion or fanfare. And we've seen that in a couple of other games, but a simple command line addition of just dash VR. There's a couple of other steps. Those are in the description below. Enables the virtual reality mode. However, be warned, there are lots of issues with it. Devs not likely to directly fix those issues because it's not a supported. And my guess is that's probably the reason why that at some future date, they'd release the VR as DLC because they don't want to have to not only fix the game's regular bugs, but those for VR as well. So that, that's just kind of my take on it, my guess. Well, in this game, it's a cyberpunk horror adventure game. You play as Daniel Lazarski, that's Rutger Hauer's character. It takes place in Poland, the year 2084. Haven't had a chance to check it out myself in person, other than through the videos and the research. All of those links in the description below. And if you have played this, let me know in the description below. I'd love to get your guys' feedback on this. Is it worth bothering with the VR mode? I just don't know enough at this point, so much appreciated. If there is one topic we have covered a lot of on this channel, it's haptic feedback. The myriad of devices that are out there to offer you haptic feedback. A lot of them, clunky, bulky. Not the kind of thing you would want to wear. There's some that are, you know, a little better than others. One thing we can be sure of, moving forward, the technology is going to get better. It's going to get more efficient and it's going to get less bulky. That's just the way it is. We've seen it with personal computers. We've sure as heck seen it with cell phones. You compare those old 81s to the smartphones of today and, well, there's no comparison at all. Well, there's a little project called the Sorotus project and well let's take a look at it because it's pretty damn cool so project serotis is from interactive architecture and it's based on techniques and developments from mit namely a stretchable hydrogel developed by mit's engineering department however Initially, this hydrogel was about 90% water. What they tried to do is figure out a way to keep that elasticity that close to the skin and be able to embed electronics. 
Doing that would allow so much because one of the issues and challenges is most mountings for electronics are hard or they're brittle. They don't contour nicely to human skin and, and they're certainly not that flexible. You know, if you're stretching, all that kind of stuff, when your muscle and the surface area changes slightly, it can just be not very comfortable. And that's where this hydrogel comes in. So the MIT group was able to develop a better hydrogel that they could embed electronics in. So one of the applications is a futuristic band-aid that you can see in this first video. It incorporates temperature sensors LED lights and other electronics inside the idea being that it could you know measure body temperature for d drug delivery there's even tiny drug delivering reservoirs and channels that they've created the article states that you know you could think of this as a smart wound dressing and indeed that's exactly what it looks like in the second video you see the Sorotis project itself part speculation part fact. The idea behind this was what if we could merge that MIT technology with the 3D camera technology that so many smartphones have now that includes depth perception, object recognition, those types of things. If they could combine the hydrogel with electronics and haptics, perhaps they could develop a system that would assist people who have either no vision or are vision impaired. And that's what you're seeing in the video, which is so freaking cool. The gel inflates, deflates, there's hydraulic aspects to it. And essentially the idea here is that you have a device like the mobile phone that maps where the person is walking. And this is in an interior area for the video. And then the haptics respond as you approach real life objects, the pillar in the video, a wall, etc., and reacts accordingly. Now, for that type of technology, it's great for vision impairment, absolutely, but so much more beyond that. Sky, really the limit for this type of technology, and proof, yet again, as we move forward, the stuff is just gonna get more sophisticated way more functional, less bulky, more streamlined, etc., etc., and I cannot freaking wait. So, word on this, they're still quite a few years off, but damn, wouldn't this be amazing. For example, in two, three years, to have that kind of haptic feedback on something that you might be able to apply as easy if you were applying a piece of Velcro, something that you could put onto your body, your arm, your neck, wherever, easily. Take it off easily, and yet it could deliver that type of haptic sensation. I'd be okay with that. There would be absolutely no problem. The issue for me is always the current limitations because of the bulkiness and everything else. Just awesome to see people working on cool stuff like this. Well, guys, like I said, I've got a really exciting week coming up. Can't wait to share it with you guys. As for the weekend, however, sadly, it is behind us. Guys, as always, cheers.